we might react to something. So we did the t Tinder Swindler breakdown yesterday, yesterday part one, and yeah. we're going to do a second part on it because that uh, documentary, even though, you know, a lot of people are triggered by it, it does, it, it, it's a fantastic showing of uh, female nature as mm -hmm. to how uh, men can kind of deal with women and play to their emotions to be able to mm -hmm. get what they want. Now, obviously he did it in a terrible way. Yeah. You know, he committed yeah, have fraud you, are, and are you ladies familiar with this Tinder swindler? No. Yes. Explain that, please. Long story short, guy uses charm, looks, and affluence to con women into giving him large sums of money. He would take money, go to another girl, show her an extravagant lifestyle, build mm -hmm. rapport with her, start finessing her for money, and then go to girl number three, etc. And just this kept is what we call in the financial world a Ponzi scheme. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he didn't have any money. He got money from a lady. He yeah. used that money to prove to this person, hey, look at these returns that I'm getting. All right, boom, boom, boom. And then basically, just like in the, the uh, 2008 recession, when everybody wants their money back, boom, who's left holding the hot potato? Yeah. So what ended up happening with this guy? So yeah, he ended up going to jail, and he's actually out now. Like he's on, he's on living Instagram, living free. life, and everything. Can we pull so, him up, Eric? This yeah. guy, Tinder swindler. Yeah. So and um, Netflix did a documentary on him. Yeah. Yeah. He's actually suing them right now, though. Yeah. Him and his bodyguard okay. are, are suing it. But we analyzed the video you know, more. They're from, suing Netflix. Yeah. 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 For Why? defamation. Uh. Well, okay. Yeah, this defamation. Is yeah. Yeah. This is him. So, okay. and where's he from? Do you know? Israel. Uh, Israel. Wow. He's Israeli, huh? the Israeli uh, <laughs> Mac Daddy. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so we, yeah. we broke it down from a perspective to kind of let guys know why this man mm -hmm. was so successful from a dating perspective. Yeah, Even break though that down. He used his skills, you know, to commit a crime, but it does not, you know, it still doesn't change the fact that he did have skills in understanding female nature where he was able to hit them at certain emotional trigger points mm -hmm. to be able to get what he wanted. Which, to be honest with you, a lot of the tactics he employed are some yeah. of the tactics that women employ on men. But it's just very rare when a man is exactly. able to reverse it and finesse a woman. Hell, when a man finesses a woman, it's a documentary and everyone <laughs> knows about it. But when a right. woman finesses a man, nobody cares. It's you know just, what I'm saying? you know, so, vanilla ice cream yeah. at that point. Another day in you, office. And, uh, ladies, has, if a guy, attractive ladies, got your shit together, good looking dude, he starts asking you for money. How do you respond? Negative. Just... That is that not you're not gonna ask what it's for. How can I help? What is it? Just like I'm not giving you. If shit. I just met you and you're asking me for money, why are you asking me for money? This no, that's for family, friends, people you trust yeah. with years mm -hmm. and years, and even then, it's that it's comes with great. time. What do you think was so attractive about this man that they, these women were willing to give him? Did he know them for an extended period of time? Was it like a yeah, like he, hit he it would, and quit it kind of a thing? He, and he then he would date them for several months, sometimes a year, a year plus. And, and what he, he would do, them the lifestyle. he showed them a certain lifestyle. Uh, he sold them a dream. He took them basically. on planes. Did he, he have them. money from the jump? Or is it was it all just Ponzi scheme? Yeah, he was. I mean, I don't, I don't know. There was his credibility. You could Google him and his family. That's why there was like you, you could see that he was the son of a diamond tycoon. But that so, was why. Right, he but, wasn't, but right. So but, he basically planted stories on the internet to he created validate a, who he was. Yeah, a whole what, what personality is it? online, and you could see it by articles. You see it by like his business, mm -hmm. his planes, all that lifestyle. Wow. Yeah, Instagram. So he had the perception out there that he was somebody. So seeing that, he approaches you, hey, you know what? I want you to be my girl. I want you to live with me. I want you to take care of me. Sorry, sorry be with me. You're like, okay, you know what? If I'm his girlfriend and he needs help, he's mm -hmm. rich, so he'll pay me back. That's the whole premise of it. How, how actually, often do you think this happens? I, I mean, <laughs> well, with, between men and women, I, obviously rarely. not Yeah, not as often. But yeah, he pretty much perfectly backstopped his, his background. You know, we call yeah. that in law enforcement. You put undercover and you got to have, he has to have a certain background. So if yeah. criminals Google him or mm -hmm. look up criminal history, whatever, they're able to see okay, he is who he purports himself to be, so we're going to do business with him because he's mm -hmm. a criminal too. So this guy pretty much backstopped himself with, you know, showing, oh, I'm part of this family, I have this lavish lifestyle, look at my Instagram stories, he's taking them out on planes, etc. but the women don't know mm -hmm. that he actually procured that money from another woman prior that he swindled. Yeah. I want to so, play a game with you real quick. Yeah, sure. Because, you know, you used to be in law enforcement, Yeah. And we gave the good cop, bad cop analogy. Yeah. Be, put on your cop hat and tell me, what was wrong with what he did, illegal, whatever, and then put on your Womanizer Wednesdays hat. And be like, <laughs> this is what he did, bro. This is what we need to, like, can you break that down for me? Well, I mean, so here's the thing. This this all happened in Europe. So, mm -hmm. um, but I'm, I'm, let's say it happened in the United States. This would be wire fraud because the girls were sending him under, money under a you know, okay. certain pretense. So that's an easy federal offense. I think it's 18 U.S.C. 1343, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. um, which is wire fraud. It's a very easy catch-all. Probably, you know, um, false statements 1001 because I'm sure he had to lie on certain documents, et cetera, uh, you know, to get some of this money. And yeah, man, I mean, if, if this happened in the United States, definitely it would, it would be federal because he's traveling all over the place. That's another thing too. He was traveling to different countries in Europe as well. 
So that's why it was very difficult to go after him mm -hmm. because he'd be in one country for a couple you know, weeks or whatever, then he moved to another one, et cetera, and he was committing crimes all over the place. And obviously every country has different laws, different yeah. regulations, et cetera. Was so. he stealing from people that weren't women as well? We don't, I, I think he was. I think he yeah. was because I saw, towards the end of the documentary, you see like guys complaining as well. But um, but yeah, so from the law enforcement perspective, fraud all day, wire fraud. And then from mm -hmm. the Womanizer Wednesday perspective, yes. the, the, the dating side is um, he was able to play to women's emotions and he was able to hit certain trigger points that were extremely, how do I say this, sensitive. So what mm -hmm. he basically did for one of the girls, right, was he told her, hey, I want you to go apartment shopping. I want you to move in. And she spent like a whole day looking at, you know, lavish apartments, etc. And she's like, oh, I can feel it. Like she can almost taste the fact that they're going to be together, you know, in a, in a mm -hmm. living together. And then, bam, he drops on her next day. Oh, me and my friend got assaulted. My security guard. I need help. Blah, blah, blah. And it would be very strange for her to not help him after he kind of had set this dream up. So she was in a vulnerable position because mm -hmm. he had sold her the dream. And then he told her, hey, spend a day going look in an apartment so she could feel it. And then, bang, he reverses it, pulls the rug from underneath her. Hey, I need $30,000 because I can't use my cards anywhere. They're tracking me. My life is in danger. And she started sending the money to him through credit cards, taking loans, et cetera, and he got her. Now, based on the elaborate scheme this guy put together and, and how he broke it down, you know, the guy says, babe, we're going to go, we're going to move in. Like, these girls, these women are in love with him? Yeah.